Hello and welcome to Off The Shelf Reviews. I'm not even supposed to be here today. And I'm Gary. And today we're going to review and discuss Clerks, which came out in 1994, written and directed by Kevin Smith. Ian, why don't you give us the synopsis? Well, the story follows Dante Hicks, played by Brian O'Halloran. Dante has had to go into work on his day off, and we follow him on a typical day as he interacts with all the different customers he has to deal with, plus his friend Randall, who operates the video store next door, and a couple of relationship issues. And we question, will he make it to the end of his shift? I kind of mark this film as maybe one of the last sort of great independent films just on the cusp of the internet age. Yeah. You know, just at yeah. the, the, the moment when home video was transitioning, we had DVDs, yeah. the internet was about to become a thing, and so you don't really get that many filmmakers that break through now from, like, the home market or word of mouth, and you know, that, that kind of feel. So he kind of, like, marks, like, one of the last directors to come through that way. Yeah. And, you know, Clerks almost very nearly didn't happen. You know, Kevin Smith was, you know, a big... A, we all know today that he's, like, one of the biggest nerds on the planet. <laughs> he, he was also one of the ones that helped usher in that new wave of nerddom that yes. would, we would catch up, like, maybe, what, f 10, 15 years after this film? Yeah. When, you know, when Kevin Smith is right next to Stan Lee and Marvel and it's yeah. become as massive as it is today. Kevin Smith was one of the ones early in film championing it and talking about geek culture in conversations. Yeah. But like I said, this film almost never happened. He... Kevin Smith went to film school yep. and eventually dropped out <laughs> yeah. and ended up working in a convenience a store. A convenience store, yeah. And, uh, and it was only when he saw Richard Linklater's uh, Slacker movie ah. uh, that, that Smith realized he was like, that guy made that on no money, really. Yeah. He just had the will to make a damn movie. Yeah. So he was like, well, I'm going to do the same. And he ended up selling... Thousands of pounds worth of his own collection. Yes, yeah. Maxing out all of his debit and credit cards. Yeah. Asking his parents to give all the money that they possibly had. And then he worked 6 a.m. to 11 a.m. in the store. Yeah. Oh, sorry, 11 p.m. Yeah. And then filmed, filmed. from 11 p.m. until 5 nearly 5 in the yeah. morning. Then slept for an hour and then opened the store at <laughs> 6. to work. And did it. I mean, literally in the commentaries, you'll hear that they slept in that store. They slept yeah. in the video store. Yeah. They edited there. They partied there. You know, relationships and marriages were born <laughs> from this place. And uh, I, I mean, now it is like almost a shrine. Yes. It's like a, it's like Kevin Smith fans will now go <laughs> to this <laughs> and store. And stand at the convenience <laughs> store. <laughs> This film has a, has a legacy. It's a cult classic. It's a, it's an absolute classic. I the first the first Kevin Smith movie I ever saw was Dogma, and I saw it three times in the cinema in the space of a week. I I, I went to the cinema one day, and there was a bunch of films in there, and I was just like, oh, you know what? I like the look of Dogma. I saw the trailer. It looked funky, so I watched it, and I was like, oh my god, this is that was fucking brilliant. Just it's like new and fresh and so i went purposely out of my way after i saw dogma to find out who the fuck this guy was what the hell he was doing and i started going back and and luckily at the same time my corner shop was going through there we're getting rid of our vhs tapes and we're getting all of our dvds back in and so they had a bunch of vhs tapes they were getting rid of and luckily i was able to procure from them clerks chasing amy and more rats all on vhs for like 50p each and the, the the guy behind the counter i still remember the look on his face of him looking at me like why is this guy so excited while i'm stood there going oh my god oh my god oh my god oh my god you know and i raced home and i and i watched them and Clerks blew my mind, you know, like Gary said, this guy had literally, like a lot of us was sat in a dead end job thinking to himself like, what the fuck am I doing? You know, I want to do something good with my life. And then he just, he just Sam raimi and fucking George romero the shit out of this fucking movie, you know? And when I say that, like, if you don't know film, go and educate yourself. Because when I say that, I mean, he fucking got 
he financed it himself. He threw a lot of his collection away so that he could get the money, so that he could call in his buddies and his friends. You know, he took ideas from his own life. And he, you know, he, he, one moment he stood in front of the camera as Silent Bob. The next minute he's behind the camera filming Dante and, and, and Randall. You know, he had to film at night time. You'd never know that. Like, if you look and really look closely, look at the 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 window behind them when they stood at the the counter yeah it's black you know and you but they 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 written into the script an excuse the shutters <laughs> that, that's the and that's the brilliant thing but it's, it, it goes back to like dawn of the dead with romero where he's trying to film at night it's because guerrilla more... filmmaking yes you, do, you adapt on the fly you find reasons to overcome the obstacles that are there yeah and uh, now granted you know some of the continuity might be off in the film with some of the times but but the, it's the relationship you can have with the film. Like, within the first five minutes of watching Dante fall out of his cupboard, you know, and answering the phone early in the morning because he's had a late night because he closed the night before, I sit there and I go, what's he doing in that cupboard? Right. <laughs> how but, did he get in there? But, but, a couple of times I'll be like, yeah, I know how I got in that cupboard because I ended up in a cupboard a couple of times. I don't know how I got there. You just, you did. You finished work. You went and had a few beers. You stumbled home. You woke up the next day. But then it's the whole, just the whole attitude of him not wanting to go into work and his boss is on his ass and he has to. And you, you don't want to, but you know you have to because if you get fired, that's it. You got to find something else. And so you, you watch him go through the whole opening sequence. I mean, Kevin Smith really knows how to pick music fits and and especially fits for its time absolutely and well a lot of the music was also written just for the film mm. um when when miramax eventually picked the film up for distribution there was quite a few tracks that they couldn't get the rights to so they had to re-record or have extra music put in there i thought miramax only made serious movies like the piano or the crying game oh that's a jane silent pop joke don't worry it's a god man <laughs> That's, that's the thing. It's like the movie comes across so serious, but then you just have this young guy's vision. And so, like, I don't really fully understand what each one of the title cards mean. Like, I know that they're, they're really long words. I don't do long words. Well, <laughs> you know, and I'm sure if I looked into the, the interpretation of the word, it would it would connect with the situation that's going on. You know, but it's just... Like, well, the, the whole film is, you know, broken down into nine, you know, there's nine titles. Yeah, yeah. And it's a play on, you know, uh, the, uh, Dante and his journey through the nine rings of hell. See, I didn't, didn't even get that. And so the Divine Comedy <laughs> yeah. and Dante is his name. So it's yeah, it's pretty much playing on, on that. Yeah, that that's brilliant. I mean, this whole first section, I think, is just brilliant. Where the guy is stood there, he's bought a coffee and another guy, another customer comes up to the counter and asks for a pack of cigarettes. And the guy with the coffee starts making this whole big deal, you know, do you know how much you're smoking? Do you know how much damage you're doing to your body? Here's a lung. Here's a picture of somebody who's on a machine. This is a thing you put in your throat, you know, and more customers are coming in. And Dante, you re I, I've worked behind the counter. And so, you know, you you got to deal with this shit. you got to deal with this customer who's a bit of an asshole. At 10 past six in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> but you can't kick him out, you know, because he's the customer. The customer's always right. And so the way that this argument just kind of builds up, that this guy is constantly trying to get customers to not buy cigarettes. They're buying chewing gum instead. And then they start throwing cigarettes at Dante behind the counter. Like fucking he's the death merchant. <laughs> It's like 7 o'clock in the morning, you're fucking doing this. <laughs> it's only until Veronica turns up at the store and pretty much saves Dante by just chewing out this, you know, this anti-smoking salesman. Yes. And it turns out that he's actually an agent for a bubblegum company. <laughs> he's so, yeah. You're a Chulis gum representative? Chulis? And you're stirring up all this anti-smoking sentiment. To what? Sell more gum? <clears throat> Get out of here. And, and that's it. Like, you go from this kind of weird situation with these customers buying cigarettes like i like that guy who comes up at the end and he's like pack of cigarettes <laughs> he still <laughs> buys them anyway. Buys them anyway 
But the Veronica and Dante relationship is something more so on top of the film that you can relate to because Veronica, uh, played by Marion Gigliotti, um, you know, like I don't know how much real acting experience any of these people had had before going into the film. Very little. Um, Kevin Smith, a lot of the time when he was out of uh, a film school, mm. uh, used to hang around the community centre and the playhouse in, in New Jersey in the town he was in. Yeah. And that's how he met some of the others as well. So they'd had like minor stage experience, but no one had worked on film or television and almost... Like, there's over 50-plus actors yeah. in this film, and yet none of them really, you know, went on and pursued an acting career. But th I think that's what makes it so much more real than any other... Almost documentary-esque, like, yeah. fly on the wall, like, capturing these conversations. And, like, I honestly think, like, the, the script yes. is the I, star yes. of this film. Yeah, I, I was about to say that same thing, because, like, with the, just the situation you have with Dante and Veronica sat behind the counter, you know, he's just lazy and he's left change up there. And they go through this whole explanation. She's like, oh, aren't you afraid anybody's going to steal anything? He's like, well, you people see this? money loose on a counter, they automatically think they're being watched. Yeah, so, they so they're more honest. They're just going to get their paper and their coffee and they're just going to walk off. And you, then you get into this in-depth conversation about their relationship, you know, about how Dante's had sex with 12 girls and veronica is so upset about this and she's like oh my god you're such a pig he's like well, how many have you slept with she's like three including you and he's like oh okay but then you meet snowball who <laughs> like this guy doesn't really do much in the movie but if you watch but you fucking remember him because he just kind of walks in he's like hey veronica how you doing maybe a drug addict maybe drunk i don't know but when she explains the reason why he's called snowball and then how she's sucked the dick of 37 different guys. And Dante just fucking explodes. <laughs> like, oh my God. Now, when I, it's, it's weird. Like, you've, I've, I've said this many times. You watch films in different stages of your life. When I watched it young, I got it. I was like, oh man, that's really funny. It's a stupid joke. As I got older, I'm like, man, how would I feel if somebody came, you know, somebody I was close to came up to me and told me they'd suck like 50 odd dicks? See, what well, my experience is why you have those conversations very early on in your relationship. <laughs> So oh, not like, at all. So, oh, <laughs> no, because you'll always wonder. No, you'll always no, wonder. No, I don't. I, I don't. <laughs> it's the fact that the joke builds and builds and builds. It's the fact that he's screaming at anybody who will listen. <laughs> Thirty-seven dicks, yes. and it's the customer, and it's the response where he just says in a row, <laughs> yeah, yeah. and it's just like but don't you know? Yeah. It's just like the joke crescendos perfectly there and then it builds up in more when he, he shouts out the door doesn't he don't be sucking any dick to the car park and you watch the guy just walk, walk off <laughs> hey try not to suck any dick on the way to the parking lot hey hey you get back here there are so many jokes in this film. I mean, not all the jokes land. I mean, it, but the but the characters are still witty and they're still funny anyway. So yeah. even though they're not laugh out loud moments like that moment, which was also the, the key reason why Miramax ended up picking up the film was that they'd stumbled through the script and read that moment and yeah. just went, look at this, look how hilarious this is. Yeah. Hopefully the rest of the script's as funny as this. <laughs> But it's like when you in, when you bring in the interaction with Randall Grimes, uh, played by Jeff Anderson. Uh, like I just want to say, this is this really is like a buddy movie. Yes, he arrives so late into the film as oh, well. It's because he's late for work. He don't give a shit. <laughs> he's late for his own movie. It's fine. <laughs> it's, it's great. But Randall, Jeff Anderson. I mean, maybe I picked up a couple of things from this movie. You know, when I first saw it, maybe a little bit too much. But between him and and Jay, Jason Muse, I just loved, I loved their attitude at life. Because as much as I want to be like Jay and Bob and Randall, I'm so much like Dante. Because you kind of have to be. That's the kind of right thing to do. That's, that's the everyday person. Like Ke Kevin Smith has said that Randall is him. Oh, sorry, uh, Dante is him. Dante is him, yeah. yeah. Where Randall just... He he just he's so cool. He's like the fucking Fonz, you know. Like when he walks up to that woman and he's just like, "Oh man, the guy's late," you know. And she's like, "Yeah, I really want that videotape." He's like, "You ain't getting it." And she's like, "I bet you twenty bucks." And he walks off and he gets the keys from Dante and he walks back and she realizes, "Oh fuck, <laughs> I've just cost twenty twenty dollars." 
but it hits so many different situations with him. Like I, I, I love the Star Wars conversation. Yes, absolutely. It, it's for me. It is my favorite scene in the film. It's the biggest highlight because I've never seen nerd characters talk about a subject about something that you're interested in as well. Yeah, and offer you an insight that you'd never thought of before. Yeah. It's just so mind blowing, you know, to sit there because you you go and watch a film and you never won't think about it after. You just switch your brain off and enjoy two hours, and then somebody sits there and goes, "They were all contract workers on the fucking Death Star, so those fucking rebels killed a bunch of innocent people." But I love the other guy that was like, "Oh, well, actually, I'm a roofer, and yes! so you know, we actually look at our contracts and see who we're going to be working for. And if it said Death Star, De Emperor Palpatine, you'd be like, no, no, I'm probably going to die working on that. I don't care how much you pay me.'" <laughs> and I, I absolutely love that situation he has with the mum and the kid yes. where he's just like what video are you after and she's like oh we're looking for like play days in Funland or something and, and, and Randall's like alright okay I'll, I'll check to see if they got an order and he just starts listing the most offensive <laughs> movies that you could like I, I was sat there watching it for the review thinking is he doing it on purpose while the lady's dead oh, absolutely or absolutely. is he actually that got is a Randall. List? that is Randall just <laughs> making names up on the spot most likely just because he wants this customer to leave yeah uh, but bless the actor he was just like I'm not doing this scene with her and her and this child in the same room. Yeah, no, you so can't. So the, the, they were filmed separately. Yeah. But unfortunately, the actor found out that in order to get the response from her, the script had to be read out to her anyway. So. Yeah. <laughs> hey, but at least the kid wasn't there. But th th that's, th th that's the best thing about Kevin Smith, is that he he took those ideas and was just like, right, we need this scene, but we need to make it like this. So if we film him first, read the script to her, get her reactions to, and then just edit it all together. It just works so well. Come clean, come gargling naked sluts, come buns three, coming in socks, come on Eileen, huge black cocks with pearly white cum. Jay and Silent Bob. <laughs> now, because Jay and Silent Bob is probably a bigger brand name than Clerks. Yeah. You know, they've had their own movie, they've had their own reboot, they've had their own TV series. Video games, comic books, t-shirts, the fucking works a exactly and so when you go back to clerks and see just how quaint <laughs> how raw they both are because the two of them have evolved so much over over time yeah. and over the course of the viewer skewing sort of universe yeah but to see the raw original like placement of these two is, is just great i i love i love it because i was i was looking into a documentary just before christmas where people were like like jason muse wasn't really signed on to the film you know, he, he knew Kevin Smith, you know, but Kevin Smith was interacting with all these other people. Well, Kevin Smith originally didn't like Jason Mewes. Exactly. Because Kev Kevin Smith believed himself to be the funny man of the group yeah. until Jason Mewes turned up yeah. and everyone went, this is the funny man. Yeah. And so the, Kevin Smith was like, no. And so Jason Mewes literally just turned up at Kevin Smith's house and went, hey, I know you. We're going to be working together on something. So let's hang out. Yeah. And Kevin Smith was like, no, you're not my friend. Go away. Now look at him. <laughs> yeah. I kind of did the same thing with this one. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> just turned up one day. <laughs> but that that's that's how it just the relationship really does work. You know, Silent Bob is literally just Kevin Smith standing there not saying anything. You know, is he a character or is he just Kevin Smith just standing there? I guess he's kinda of like the Charlie Chaplin of of the modern films where yeah. he's the silent character but that has sometimes an important monologue to deliver at the end but that's the beauty because he's writing the script for muse yeah and then muse is delivering it and you can immediately get lost in the idea especially with this film that it's it's all real it's dante randall and jay just saying whatever the fuck they want in front of the camera because it it jason muse like He's been through so much. Heavy into alcohol and drugs and, and, and sex and all, all, all the good stuff. And he's managed... <laughs> but he, in, he indulged. Yeah, but he's managed to turn his life around yeah. so well. And and this is one of the things I wanted to say with this movie as well. It's like we almost lost Kevin Smith a couple of years ago from a heart attack. You know, because they they're would they just living their life. They're having fun. They're doing whatever they can. These things do catch up on you after a while. And so I sit there and I'm watching Clerks and I'm like, man, I'm so thankful that I've, I was able to experience this. Jason Mewes, because we could have lost him at any point. I mean, he fucking died in Feast, you know, <laughs> and handing out Dutch rudders and Zack and Miri do a porno, you know. But then I remember 
Like, this is why I really love Jay and Silent Bob Reboot when that was released. I know a lot of people slandered that movie for not being as good as what it is. But it's the feeling that I got when I saw how older they were yeah. and everything they'd been through that I was like, you know what? I'm glad I'm on this journey with you because it just feels so good. I love it when he stood there in front of the store with Olaf. Olaf, <laughs> berserker face. <laughs> I'll watch what he's going to sing. i watch. It's too funny. My love for you is like a truck bell zaka. Would you like some making fuck bell zaka? <laughs> That's fucking funny, man. Did he say making fuck? And then Chewbacca. I fucking love that Chewbacca song. Yeah. I have it on my playlist. <laughs> One of the big cruxes of the movie um, is Dante coming to terms with his relationship issues. Like, he's in a relationship with Veronica and they're in love, I suppose. But he secretly pines for his ex-girlfriend, Caitlin, played by, uh, played by Lisa Spooner, who sadly passed away a few years ago. Um, but it's just... You know, like I said, it's the relatability. Like, me personally, I have not had two women on the go at once, unluckily. Um, but it's it's seeing how somebody else has to deal with those situations. Yeah, yeah. And he's constantly got Randall winding him up about it. Yeah. And, and giving him grief about it because he is stuck. You know? Yeah. He's, he, he can't move forward in this current relationship because he's not got over his previous one. And he soon finds out that she's about to get married to an Asian design major. Yeah. And that just throws a whole spanner into his life. Because yeah, that's the thing. Caitlin has been kind of fucking with Dante. She just kind of keeps him around to make herself feel good. Well, she cheated on him countless, countless times in times. college. Yeah. And, you know, but he was just like, oh, but our relationship strengthened every time as a result we're, of it. We're in love, yeah. And you you know it's not right. So as an audience member, you're like, Jesus Christ, he's going to fuck this up. And Veronica's going to pay the price. Like, I love the bit where she comes to give him lunch and she's made him like a lasagna. Yeah. You know, and that would come up at the end of the movie when Bobby even says, like, look, there's many girls in the world, but there's only one that will bring you lasagna. And you're like, man, that's true. But Dante doesn't see that. And that's... Like I said, brilliance of the script because you know Dante's in the wrong and you're watching him do these bad things. But you know, but you also know that kind of Randall is a bit of an asshole, but he's spouting the truth <laughs> at Dante. Like, yes. just get over it, fucking get but over it. But at yourself. the same time, you're still sympathetic to Dante because he's having such a shitty day. That he's not even supposed to be there for. You know, the, his boss was supposed to come in at midday yeah. to take over so he could go and play hockey. He get finds out that his boss is now somewhere in Vermont <laughs> yeah. and will not be back at all. So he has to close as well. So yeah. his day's been extended. So uh, he ends up deciding that they're going to play hockey on the roof. <laughs> and they do. And they close the shop. And they play. And then, of course, somebody gives them grief and ends up coming up onto the roof and giving and ends up knocking the ball off the roof yeah. into the gutter, into the drain. <laughs> yeah. And they only got 15 minutes of game time. <laughs> I love that shot where you get the guy, he's knocked the ball off and he's like, fuck you. And he walks off screen and the other guy just cracks. Oh, you, you're not entirely, you don't see it, but I'd like to imagine that he's just whacked this guy on the back of the head and he's just unconscious on, <laughs> Still the, on roof. the roof. <laughs> yeah. But uh, they soon find out that another friend of theirs actually passed away the day before. Yes. And there's going to be a, a... It's either a wake or the funeral is being held. It's, it's the funeral. It's the brilliance of you ask you films, especially Kevin Smith. Because this, this girl who's died is the girl who dies at the beginning of More Rats. That's right. And she dies of an embolism because somebody calls her fat and she's been doing laps in, in the swimming pool. And she's actually... I don't know if she's related, but she's known by... Uh, Joey Lauren Adams' character from Chasing Amy, who yeah. also knows it. So it's like this... And interconnected. I mean, the more films that Kevin Smith makes in that universe, the the more the references spread yes, out. And yeah. it becomes impossible to track them all. <laughs> but it, they, they decide they've got to close the store again to go to this funeral. Um, and, you know, the two of them are kind of questioning in the car if it's a good idea or not. And they both knew them. And Randall doesn't need to close the video store. But he's like, Randall's like, look, if you're going, I'm fucking coming with you. You know, I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not hanging around there. And they drive to the funeral parlor. And what's awesome is that they shoot in five minutes and they're right back <laughs> out again, rushing. 
And for years, it bugged the shit out of me about what the hell had gone on in there until they released it in a lost scene in one of their comic books. And basically, the two of them have gone in there and they're standing in line there and they're feeling bad. And then as they're leaning over, Randall's trying to do something or, or he's, he's trying to, he's saying something disgusting to, to Dante and he drops the car keys into the coffin. And they're trying to get the keys back out and they knock the coffin over. So then when they run back to the car and they jump in the car and they're like, what are you doing? You knock the coffin over. It, oh, to me, it totally makes sense. <laughs> yes, yeah. <laughs> Now, there is a little bit of a time discrepancy in the film. That yes. Now, there is a point in time when, when Dante's out of the store and Randall's sitting in for him, not looking, and he serves this very young girl <laughs> cigarettes. Yeah. And we see her put the cigarette in her mouth. Of course, she's not here to smoke it. Uh, but this guy comes up in, into the store and says, hey, were you working here between these hours? So like, yes. And he gives him a ticket for like $500, $500 yeah. Yeah. for selling tobacco products to underage person, etc. But I'm just like, but the time frame that he gives is the exact same time that both of them were out anyway because they were at the, the funeral. Yeah. And I also keep forgetting that it's a Saturday that it's happening because right at the beginning of the film, yeah. Veronica's like, oh, haven't you all got work today? Haven't you all got to commute somewhere? Yeah. I'm like, I, I don't know whether it's an American thing, a Saturday thing. Don't no, worry. I mean, like, we... You throw out as much as you can of realism. But then it was also, film. she died on the Friday and she's getting buried on the very next day. I was like, <laughs> yeah, I know. It's like, what the fuck? Movie, <laughs> movie magic, man. Movie right, magic. Yeah. But it's like, before they'd gone to the funeral, you had the old man come into the store. Oh my God. This, this, like, this, this whole sequence is just crazy how Kevin Smith even came up with this fucking idea. And you have this old man come up to the counter while Dante's there and he asks if he can use the, the toilet. And Dante's like, well, it's only for staff. And the old man's like, look, I'm old, you know, go on, give me a hand. Okay, off you go. So the guy goes back there, he comes back two seconds later. He's like, hey, have you got the good toilet roll, not the bad toilet roll that sandpapers my hemorrhoids? And he's, Dante's like, <laughs> here, here's some good toilet roll, thank you very much. And he comes back two seconds later and he's like, well, I kind of need something to read because it takes me a while. Can I have one of your big titty magazines? No, not that one. The one down there with the bigger titties. Yeah, I like that one. And so Dante gives it to him and the guy goes off. And you go through the rest. You go through the hockey. You go through the funeral. And weirdly enough, you can forget that the old man... Well, it's because we've also been introduced to so many colourful characters. Yes. We've got the egg-checking man. <laughs> the egg-checking man. Who ends up just... Flatting all the eggs all over the fridge doors anyway. You've got Kevin Smith's mum yeah. coming in to check on all the milk yeah. to find the one carton that will last a hundred years. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You, you got the people asking what the price is. Oh, God. Like, so many of them and the big neon signs. I like it how, they, how Randall and Dante are com comparing the, ca the, the customers. And Dan Randall was just like, look, you should see the ones we get in the video store. And the guy is just like, hey, have you got that film with that guy who was in it last year? You know, with the film. And I'm like, I've met people like that. Yes. <laughs> what would you get for a six-year-old boy who chronically wets his bed? So do you have any new movies in? Do you have that one with that guy who was in that movie that was out last year? But Caitlin ends up coming to the store. And surprising Dante and telling him that she's she's broken up the Asian design major. Um, she kind of wants to get back with Dante. He's really excited about the whole idea. And she's like, well, you're going to have to do something about Veronica. He's like, oh, and this is the part where I really start to hate on Dante a little bit for being such a selfish bastard. You know, he's not thinking about anybody other than himself and what he can get with Caitlin. Yeah. Um, and he says to her, like, Oh, you know, we'll we'll go out for a date. We'll go for a meal, and she's like, okay. And so he gets Randall to watch the store as he goes off and gets changed, and he he disappears for a while. And Caitlin comes to the store, and Randall's just uh, Randall delivers this amazing line, which is like, "You break his heart, I'll break your legs." It's territoriality. I was here first. I'm like, <laughs> I've used that a few times. I don't think I've ever seen those people ever again when it comes to friends. It's like they knew I'd kill him. Um, but she goes back to the back of the shop to get changed and Dante comes in and he's just like hey how's it going oh yeah Caitlin's back there and Caitlin comes out and she's all her hair's all all over the place and she's repositioning her clothes and she's like wow you got out of here quick and Dante's like what are you talking about she's like look we've just had the best sex ever I went back there and you were you didn't say anything it was dark because the light doesn't work and you know I just we just did everything it was 
it was amazing. And it turns out that the old man died of a heart attack in the toilet. It's several hours ago. The body can maintain an erection after expiration, sometimes for hours. Did he have the adult magazine when he came in? Oh, uh, no, I, I gave it to him. <laughs> yeah, I mean, when you see her in the back of the hospital, the back of the ambulance, you're like, yeah, she's going to need uh, some, some therapy after that. They extended the story with that in the comic book again, where Dante one day goes to see Caitlin in the mental ward, because she's completely catatonic, <laughs> oh, no. right? And he goes to meet her in the mental ward. And Randall had given Dante the idea that maybe she needed something to coax her out of the, the, the coma. And so maybe, maybe sticking um, a, a Christmas candy cane in a place where you don't really want to put a Christmas candy cane might actually wake her up. It does wake her up, but I remember the shot. I remember the panel to panel shot where Caitlin is stood there <laughs> screaming at Dante. And then the very next panel is you watch, the, you see this little bit of candy cane just drop out from beneath between her legs. I was like, oh my fucking God. <laughs> this is like bigger than the donkey porn <laughs> shit from Clerks 2. <laughs> well... Apparently, the end of the film's all wrong anyway, yes. because uh, you don't put dead bodies in the ambulance and drive away with the sirens going. There was no one in any media and medical emergency. Yeah. But, yeah. I, I don't, get, don't care. Because, I mean, you, you, you now have the kind of, the, the crux, like, it's getting late, the store's coming to the close. Dante is furious because he's ruined his relationship with Caitlin. Randall... Randall thinks, because Dante gives him the, gives him the conversation of, like, maybe you should think before you say anything and so randall does think that dante and caitlin are going to get together so he tells veronica he tells her look he doesn't want to be with you he wants to be with caitlin i'm really sorry that i have to be the one to break it to you and you know how bad the situation is that you have to get your friend to tell your girlfriend that you're breaking up but dante still wants to be with veronica he you know because caitlin's catatonic now <laughs> And she beats the shit out of him. She gives him hell. And there's even that bit where she even says to him, you think 37 dicks was low? You gonna see how many dicks I fucking suck now? And I'm like, whoa. <laughs> so her way of getting revenge on him is to go and... Suck a lot of dick. Okay. That's, okay. that's revenge. <laughs> I mean, he ain't wanna, really going to want to get back with her after that. Well, like, totally. So it makes me wonder why she's still doing it then. <laughs> you say things in the heat, the moment when you're angry and things like that. <laughs> but there is, I mean, it does like climax with a big old fight. But well, I said big old big fight. Big old fight, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they, they chuck some, some candy at each other and, and call each other names, which is pretty much how they were throughout most of the film. But they're both kind of defeated, sat in the rubbish <laughs> yeah. of the convenience store. And they're just like, fuck it, it's late, it's going. Well, we're finished <laughs> i love the well, i was watching the fight sequence for the review and all i could think was was they're trying to have this fight they're trying to make it look messy and i bet you kevin smith was like not too much because i'm gonna have to clean this up well no because <laughs> apparently uh, uh, according to the commentary of like the entire time they filmed there the owners never turned up until that day and walked in and saw all the mess didn't say a word just went back out and sat in their car <laughs> until kevin went out there and went no we're gonna pay for it all it'll all be clean before we open just like every day has been yeah but, yeah yeah and yeah. Th that's it i mean randall delivers this really good thing to dante to say like fuck you you know you've been whinging all fucking day that you weren't supposed to be here why the fuck did you even come in and it is you know, on top of that monologue that we also had from Kevin Smith as Silent Bob, as he always does in all of his movies, giving us the moral lesson, Randall's le moral lesson is really, really insightful. It's like, look, you call me a fucking prick and an asshole, and I am a fucking prick and an asshole, but what are you? You know, what are you doing? You know, you're stuck here. You don't want to be here. Why are you still here? Jesus, nobody twisted your arm to be here. You're here of your own volition. You like to think the weight of the world rests on your shoulder, like this place would fall apart if Dante wasn't here. Jesus, you overcompensate for having what's basically a monkey's job. You push fucking buttons. Anybody could waltz in here and do our jobs. You know, just, just do something with your life, which is funny because it's like Kevin Smith writing that message to himself yes. in the script. Oh, yeah. Randall delivering that message to Kevin Smith's character, Dante, and then Kevin Smith hearing it through his own film. And then you just know that so many people would have seen that and gone, I need, I, I needed that lesson to push yeah. me. It was the same talk. thing that, so what, you know, like, like Linklater's uh, slacker film did for Kevin Smith, like 
go and do something. Like this, it shows you it's possible. Yeah, you can yeah. do anything, and that's it. They just they just close up the store and they go, and that's the end of the day. Yeah, I love it. He, you know, he's grabbed down the "We Are Open" sign from outside. Chucks it to him. He says, "We're closed." And yeah. They're like, "Yeah, I'm, I'm doing this tomorrow. We'll meet up for drinks tomorrow evening." Blah blah blah. Now that is the theatrical cut. That's the normal cut of the film. But yeah, that wasn't the original scripted or or shot ending. Yeah. Um. Of course, uh, a masked assailant turns up at the at the store to rob it and ends up shooting and killing Dante. Yeah. I don't that was that. how it was supposed to end. You know, the nine levels of hell. <laughs> That's where he's going now. Yeah. Um. Uh, Miramax, when they picked up the film for distribution, went, we don't like that ending, but it's your film, Kevin. We're not going to, we're not even going to tell you we don't like it. Yeah. And it was Kevin who actually turned around and went, you know what, I'm going to just drop that ending because it's so, so downbeat yeah. afterwards. Yeah. And, you know, and, and that was the way it was released. And then that scene put back in for the anniversary editions, etc. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, I mean, if, if that was the ending, then we wouldn't have maybe had, well, we definitely wouldn't have had Clerks too. We might have, just without a <laughs> Dante. Dante. Yeah. Well, maybe, yeah, yeah. I mean, but this is the thing like uh, uh, part of me is like you know if we'd watched that ending first time when the film was released it would have give, given the film a complete different tone oh yeah you know it would have been realistic with some comedy elements and a dark ending it would be so hard on a rewatch as well because you just have that death lingering over the whole film exactly you, to it. you know and like I read somewhere as well that I think it was Kevin Smith who was planning on being the assailant. He was going to cut his hair and shave his beard and, and do all this stuff and, and get it all done. And it just, you know, it's a lot of effort for for what is actually just a really small movie thrown together. And so having the small ending of Randall just pulling that sheet off and throwing it in his face and going, you're close, is so much better. Yeah. Because you just feel so much better that the film's end. You're like, man, I've, I've been on those kind of days. Yeah, yeah I've yeah. had those days, you know. <laughs> well, Liam, what were your favourite scenes from Clerks? Oh, man. Like, like obviously, I'm a massive fan of Clerks. And so pretty much a lot of the sequences. I mean, a lot of my favourite sequences either revolve around Rand Randall or, or Jay. Like, him talking to the lady at the beginning about her not getting that tape. You know, it's just so funny because it's... It's just such a good setup. I like the way that he walks past the other guy who's left his keys. Yeah. And the guy's like, hey, man, have you seen these keys? And Randall's just like, I ain't got time for love, Dr. Jones. And just walks <laughs> off. <laughs> um, I love the ordering the tapes. You know, happy, scrappy, you know. And then you got come guzzling girls, come guzzling guys. I like giraffe dick, huge point. I'm, I'm not going to do a list. I could go on for hours. I'm, I'm not doing it. Um, I love the sequence with the jizz mopper. And it's funny because the, they stood there behind the counter and he's talking about how much a jizz mopper makes. And if you don't know what a jizz mopper is, it's the guy who cleans up the plastic screens at porno theaters. We don't really have that anymore because we've got the internet. But imagine when you can wipe down your screen after... Yeah, you get it. And they're talking about it. And the guy at the uh, the guy at the counter gets really upset, like, "Oh my god, I'm never coming back in the store again. I'm so offended." And Randall goes, "Well, if that offends you, you should have a look at this." <laughs> <laughs> and even in black and white, old thirty millimeter tapes, I'm like, "That's a, that's a vagina." <laughs> but I love the fact that the guy that they're talking to is the same guy who's just done the eggs. Yes, yeah, you yeah. know. But he's playing a different. He character. plays four different parts in the film. Yeah, it's just so uh, well Kevin done. Kevin Smith called him the Lon Chaney of '90s movies. <laughs> I love it when Randall just walks into that new video store, the, oh, the bigger yes, videos, and yeah. he's just amazed. And like, he's in heaven. How many times did I feel like that walking around a blockbuster? We or, all miss it. Yeah, or, 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 or a tiny <laughs> If you little, had it, you miss it. It's one of the places I go when I go shopping with the wife. The wife's like, where are you going? I'm like, I'm going to look at the DVDs. I don't buy anything. I just look up like that shit, that shit. You know, you're just amazed. Um, I, love, I love the fight at the end, you know, and just life's problems and Randall giving that lesson to Dante. Like, get off your ass and do it. If you're going to sit around and just mope and whinge that you're not doing anything, that's all you're ever going to have. You know, and I, lo I love to take that lesson from me when I look at Kevin Smith. Like, this guy went from working in a convenience store with a comic book collection to now being one of the biggest fucking names in film that we know, you know, who gets called upon to do it. Like, this guy was in Die Hard 4. You know? Like, he was in Die Hard 4. Like, he made Red State. That movie's amazing. Like, just so much. And it all just comes from that tiny little lesson. And even on top of anything with Jay and Silent Bobbin, 
I love everything that James Holland Bob does in this movie, especially Bob's little, you know, lasagna lesson at the end. It's not as good as his Chase and Amy story, mm. but you can tell that like when he was writing the stuff for Chasing Amy, you know, he was harkering back to right. What have I said before? What have I done? You know, and it's amazing. I love it. Love it all. <laughs> yeah, this the whole script is absolutely amazing and. Like so, therefore, the entire film is is a favorite scene. But yeah, the uh, the thirty seven dicks in a row conversation, <laughs> the uh, the uh, the return of the Jedi, Star Wars, <laughs> yes. second Death Star exploding conversation, absolutely nailed it. So good, um, and I guess I just loved all of the assortment of of random people coming into the store for all the different things because. If you've worked in a convenience store, if you've been a clerk, you will have seen these people on a daily basis. Yes. Um, and so the the kind of resentment and hatred uh, that, that the clerks have for all customers is just beautifully put on display here. <laughs> Do you also think as well, you go, I kind of relate to some of the customers too. Well, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, well, Ian, do you recommend Clerks? I totally, totally recommend Clerks. I think that this film easily just goes up there with The Evil Dead uh, and Night of the Living Dead, Dawn of the Dead. For any, you know, for any future filmmaker, if you're sat there, you've got an idea and you want to get a camera and, uh, and an audio mic and things like that. I mean, people are doing it on TikTok nowadays. Well, and now, now everybody can do it. Everybody can do it, but it takes a real skill and knowledge of what you're trying to do to really deliver it to an audience for them to understand the message. And like Gary said, m maybe there's a few that we're missing, but Kevin Smith really feels like that very last one, you know, to come off the conveyor belt and say, you know what, I'm going to make a film. I'm going to, I'm going to film it myself. I'm going to, I'm going to work around it myself. I'm going to fund it myself. I'm going to edit it myself. I'm going to sort the music myself. I'm going to sort the acting, you know, do everything myself so that I can say I did something. Yeah, we can talk about how his career has gone up and down and films are good, bad. It doesn't matter. If you ever, if you've never, ever watched a Kevin Smith movie before and you never, ever plan to ever just watch Clark's. Set. Oh, hell yeah. I'm going to be recommending Clerks. This is one of my favourite indie films and it really shows what Kevin Smith could do with a minimal budget, dedication to get it done. It's such a small scale film, but with real believable characters with an outstanding script. The writing is top to bottom excellent and is the real, real star of the film. It's funny, witty, clever, rude, crude, and contains a lot of fuck bombs. <laughs> but the whole cast really bring these characters to life so well. It has endless rewatchability. On a technical level, it's fairly well shot. The nine vignettes are well edited and mixed with songs written for the film. It's got a good pace, it's well lit, perfectly structured and executed. Watch this for sure. Top recommendation. Along with Clerks too. And, mm. you know, just remember, because they serve you, doesn't mean they like you. Watch out for Clerks free, baby! Soon, yes! <laughs> Thanks for watching Off The Shelf Reviews. Come on, Samba, let's get the fuck out of this fucking jib joint with this fucking faggot Dante, you cock smoker. <laughs>